That's a good idea. her bachelor's degree from Old Dominion University of Virginia, where she graduated from Cum Laude and Phi Phi Honors. As I say, she's a smarty pants. <laughs> Additionally, she was recognized as the Communications Department Graduate of the Year and received a Faculty Award of Excellence for her performance at the university. She's currently working for San Luis Obispo-based lead firm Aetna Interactive to service national brands and provide social media support to local small businesses as an independent consultant. So with that said, uh, you are now going to get a deep dive into social media. <laughs> um, yeah, so quick disclaimers. I am not a SCORE volunteer. I am volunteering for SCORE. So I haven't signed any of the confidentiality agreements that you guys have with your counselors because I am not a counselor. That said, I'm a very busy girl and I don't really feel like stealing any of your ideas. So you're welcome to still share things with me. But if there's something you feel you need to keep private because I haven't signed the agreement, Fine. That's why I'm letting you know. Um, I am not a SCORE volunteer because SCORE volunteers are generally the professionals who have retired. There are no retired social media specialists, and SCORE has acknowledged that. So um, I have been roped into doing this. This is my third one, uh, just like Jeannie and Bob. I know that you're all kind of here for the kind of the social media motif piece of this. Um, so I will go through this presentation with you. If you have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand and ask. Mine is not email because it's not SCORE's property. Um, if you need information from this from me, uh, I have business cards in the back. I have more business cards here. I am more than happy to talk to you and work with you. Um, but I'm not retired. I'm just going to make money. So <laughs> that's why I can't give away everything for free. But I am here you know, for several hours. I do this every couple of months. Um, primarily because every small business owner I talk to just grabs me when I'm in a conference and goes, oh my gosh, you do social media, help me. Um, I understand that some of the big issues are platform selection. There's so many things out there, where do I spend my time? You don't need to do it all, I don't expect you to do it all, and anyone who tells you you should do it all, you should help take hype. Um, so I'm going to cover all kinds of great stuff with you guys today. One last little disclaimer before we jump right in. Um, I, am sub I am recovering from a concussion from about two weeks ago. So if I cross a wire and I say something and it sounds completely backwards, that's probably why, because as you just witnessed, I am ace worn pants, uh, as Jamie likes to call me. So it's a little funny and frustrating for me at the same time that I, I say things and they'll come out completely backwards and I go, wasn't right. Okay, and then I keep going. So um, I'm generally okay, but so that you know, if you stop and you go, that doesn't make any sense. Raise your hand. This probably did not make any sense. Uh, and you will not hurt my feelings. <laughs> so, all right. So you're all here for social media, obviously, but but why? I have a lot of people that will come to me and say, everybody's on social media. Everybody tells me to be on social media. Why? So here's a great little piece of information for you, just to kind of help you understand 
Why the buzz? Why social media? Um, a great statistic, in 2013, 73% of all U.S. Internet users said they use social media. There's your market right there. Social media has a high, 100% higher lead to close ratio than outbound marketing. And when Bob's in the room, I always have to apologize to him because he's used to traditional outbound marketing. Traditional marketing has a teeny tiny lead to close ratio, teeny mini. Social media is 100% higher than that. It's still not a 100% close ratio, but it's much, much higher. Um, customers who are fans on Facebook, this is for retail products, spend 83% more than customers who are not fans, and that is per shopping cart. So anytime you are online and you check out of a web store, that is your shopping cart. A shopping cart, on average, is 83% more spend with Facebook fans. So just by having them as your fan and friend on Facebook, when they come to buy from you, they buy more. That's huge. And 80% of U.S. social network users prefer to connect to brands through Facebook. It has replaced the yellow pages, and Facebook is the one you'll hear me talk the most about, not because it's my favorite, because it's really not. But Facebook is where they expect you to be. It is the yellow pages. They go to Facebook first. If you're not on Facebook and they can't find you, a lot of people will consider you not to be a legitimate business. That's not fair. If you're a small business, it doesn't mean you're not a legitimate business. They consider Facebook to be that um, way of endorsing that you are a legitimate business, which is silly, but it's the way it works. So, for those of you that don't know all of the social media players, I'm going to introduce you to six today, and you have in front of you a worksheet. Um, so you've got color copies, and you've got black and white, and this is kind of an area for you to just keep tally marks. If I talk about something and you go, oh, that sounds like my business, then you just give yourself a point next to it because that's going to help you define where to spend your time. So first off is Facebook. Facebook leverages powerful, powerful word of mouth marketing. Um, everybody knows, every marketer knows, that the best kind of referral you can get is a word of mouth referral. That's what Facebook is. That's all Facebook is. Facebook is someone saying, hey, I like this. And then their friend sees, oh, hey, she likes this. By me clicking the like button, my friends see that I clicked the like button. And all of a sudden, I'm creating word of mouth marketing without even knowing it. Forty percent of Facebook users say they will like a business to receive discounts and promotions. So, when you're on Facebook, because they expect you to be on Facebook, don't forget to occasionally do Facebook-only discounts and promotions. And 70% of U.S. adults trust brand or product recommendations from friends compared to 10% of an online ad. Um, a question I get fairly often is about Google AdWords. I don't like it. Um, I would much rather spend the money on Facebook advertising. It does much, much better. Uh, for less spend, because what happens is it plays off of that 70% trust as opposed to the 10% trust of an online ad. They don't realize in the Facebook environment that it's an ad nearly as much as they think and assume that it's a recommendation from a friend. Yes? With Facebook, it seems like on my uh, business website, well, business Facebook, that I have to invite friends to like it. In the beginning. And when you get a lot of uh, invites from people who get a lot of, I'll play this game, or uh -huh. like yes. this game, I always ignore them. So yes. it's like, how do you kind of get past the... Um, just by being engaging, and we'll get into some of that. But what you're, essentially what you're going to do with Facebook is you are going to post engaging content that your fans that are already there are going to like, click, and share. By doing that, their friends see it. Their friends come and like you. Or, if you need the shot in the arm to get started, use the Facebook ads to do a page like ad. And you'll spend, on average, about a dollar per person <coughs> to get a new fan. Now, compare that to mail marketing, you spend about $10 per person per new contact. Huge difference. And with the Facebook ads, I don't cover it really today, but Facebook ads, you can target down super narrow. We used to do in this workshop a thing where we talk about how to sell opium. And so what I would do with the, the Facebook ads is you can say, okay, who eats oatmeal? We'll say young, healthy women, young, healthy moms. 
So I can target, within a 10-mile radius, women with children the ages of 3 to 6, women who are under the age of, we'll say, 35, women who like Fitness Magazine, and women who like Quaker. Is that my target for oatmeal? And I'm going to pay a dollar per person to get them to like my page. And once they're now in my, my page likes, my fans, I can market to them for free the rest of the time. Um, and yes, engagement, which I just mentioned, is the most important thing on Facebook. Don't worry yourself with numbers and fans. At the top of your Facebook page, it's going to have um, a couple of numbers for you. One of them says, talking about this. That is what is important, not your number of fans. On average right now, um, Facebook made a huge change in December. A lot of small businesses are really suffering. Their engagement is about 3%. 3% of their fans are talking about this. Um, that really hurts because it means your, fan, your fans aren't seeing what you're doing, they're not, they're not liking, they're not clicking, they're not sharing, um, and it hurts. If you have 100 fans and 50 of them are talking about this, you're doing far better than 3,000 fans with two people talking about this. Um, I deal with it all the time, especially with plastic surgeons. They will go and buy fans. Because what happens is your fans are now in Cambodia and Sri Lanka and India, and they're going to come walk in that door and buy your product. Never. Don't do it. Um, oh, and yes, your target market is on Facebook, too. That is another question I deal with all the time. I'm looking for people over the age of 50 who like paddleboarding. They're on Facebook, too. I like people, I'm looking for people over the age of 70 who, who like cats. They're on Facebook too. Older generations are there to see the pictures of their grandkids. Younger people are there, supposed to be over the age of 13. I see that people are broken all the time. Facebook tries and they can't get around it. Um, they're on here. And you can set page restrictions if you're selling alcohol. You can set your page for over 21. I deal with plastic surgeons. Their pages are for 18 plus only. You can do those kinds of things. So again, Facebook. This is kind of the introduction. Most of you in this room will know what Facebook is, but not everybody. So Facebook, you are sharing text, photos, videos, and links in the form of about a 240 character post. You're posting about five times a week. The activity you're looking for is sharing and commenting. The interaction is, of course, people clicking that like button. And it's okay to say, click like if you agree. I hate it, it drives me crazy. However, it works really, really well. And as many times as I've tried to do my own personal test studies to prove it wrong, I can't. Click like if you like puppies. And they will click like, and I hate it. But, <laughs> I can't win. Um, you're measuring for engagement, which we just talked about, not numbers. Fan numbers don't matter. You're measuring on engagement. Why? This is, uh, Facebook is for the purpose of traffic, leads, sales. If you have a website, you want Facebook. If you have a brick and mortar, you want Facebook. If you're selling something, you want Facebook. People expect you to be there. Twitter is next. Now, Twitter, everybody seems to get on and not know what they're doing. You don't necessarily need to be on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a live stream of news. If you don't have news to share, you don't need to be on Twitter. Also, Twitter is primarily a B2B, business-to-business -business networking interface. If you are targeting other businesses, I think you're the one that was doing the ebooks. you're targeting other businesses, you should be on Twitter. If I'm trying to target uh, women to buy shoes, probably not. If you're targeting younger people, yes, Twitter you'll find on your worksheet is meant for younger audiences or B2B. It's got a very distinct um, split of who's using Twitter. Young people love Twitter. It's basically like text messaging their friends, and they'll use it as such. You're not really going to find marketing to them works very well here unless you want to like hashtag BRB whatever and talk their lingo, and then you might get through to them, but otherwise they see right through the marketing. Using it for B2B though it works really, really well. Um, keep it informational and conversational. You cannot just publish beep, 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 you have to interact. Somebody responds, somebody retweets, say thank you. Number one thing was a study, I think it was three or 
three or four weeks ago now, it was right before I hit my head, uh, it was a study showing that people, brands who say thank you on social media do better than all the rest. Say thank you. Twitter, how it works, you're primarily sharing short links, links to your blog, links to your website, links to your product, links to events. A uh, 140 character tweet, less is more. These seem really, really small. Research shows the best tweet is under 100 characters. Short, little tiny thing. Basically, it's a teaser to get them to click the link. That's what Twitter is all about. You share some sort of teaser to get them to click the link. Uh, you're tweeting about three times a day. You're having conversations with tags, app tags and hashtags, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Don't sweat the hashtag. Every one of these workshops I've done, everybody was freaked out on me about the hashtag. They're not a big deal. Okay? Um, your interaction, you're looking for retweets and favorites. That's how someone says they like you. That's how they can interact, especially to retweet or respond. Measurement here is volume which is why you're actually going to be tweeting on Twitter about eight times a day. A lot of volume. It's again, why it's not a good fit for everybody. And why traffic. Twitter creates traffic and brand presence. LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is my favorite of the social media platforms. But again, it may or may not be a fit for you. LinkedIn is not just a job board or a living resume. It is a respected source of information about you and your company. LinkedIn users enjoy reading blogs. They like reading articles. They like news and information about your company. They're not coming here for a picture of your puppy. Don't care. That's Facebook. They're not coming to uh, LinkedIn to get information and pictures about your staff having a birthday. Again, they don't care. This, the number one thing on LinkedIn are interviews. So if you have to make it up and have somebody interview you to post it on here, that's fine. That's what does better on LinkedIn than anything else are interviews and company updates. Uh, so company branding gets the most uh, engagement on LinkedIn. They want to know, just had my thousandth sale today. They want to know that on LinkedIn. Facebook, they enjoy it, but it's not necessarily as important to them. LinkedIn. You're sharing blogs, press releases, industry insight in the form of about a 200 character update. This changes all of the time. LinkedIn used to be long. You could have 1,000 characters, no problem. You still can, nobody will see it. So keep it short, under 200 characters. After that, it truncates, where it does a little see more, click here thing. Research shows nobody clicks the read more, click here. So short. Um, updating about once a week. If you don't have something to say, don't say something on LinkedIn. Again, this is where you're going to find executives and professionals. These are business owners. Don't waste their time with pictures of your puppy. Um, the activity here, you want to start discussions. Groups on LinkedIn are phenomenal to start discussions. Talk to other people who, who have coffee shops in different areas. They're not your competitor necessarily because maybe they're 500 miles away or 1,000 miles away, but you can join a small business group and have discussions with these people, and it builds activity and draws attention to your brand and can establish you as an industry leader eventually. In the beginning, you're just kind of participating. Um, the interaction you're looking for is sharing. When you've posted a news update about your business, you want other people to go out there and share it. Your measurement here are interactions, the shares, basically. And LinkedIn is volume-based also. Um, some of the platforms are keyword-based, some of the platforms are um, engagement-based, some of them are time-based. LinkedIn is a volume-based, so you need to have the shares to get the interactions. The result is leads and networking. This is a direct sales platform. The people you talk to on here are ready to buy, and they are decision-makers. Very different than Facebook. Google Plus. Now here's one many of you probably aren't used to or know really anything about. Uh, Google Plus is the one everybody loves to hate. The reality of the situation is Google Plus has had faster adoption than Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn combined. It has gone just skyrocketing uh, with the adoption rate. 
part of that is it's forced. If you have Gmail, you have Google Plus and you don't even know it. If you have YouTube, you have Google Plus and you don't even know it. So some of that number is inflated. The reality of the situation is though, uh, Google Plus offers SEO like no other platform. Does anybody here know what SEO means? One, two, three. Search engine optimization. If you have a website, you must, must, must have SEO, search engine optimization. How am I going to find your website? What words will I type in or speak to my phone to find you? Humongous. And what Google Plus offers is the ability for me to talk to my phone and find you. What has happened with, in the world of kind of Google search? They change their algorithms all the time, for, since a lot of you don't really know SEO. Um, they change their algorithms to how they read your website and determine if this keyword matches your content. Well, in all their changes, they weren't really ready for Siri. And now I can talk to my phone and ask a question. And what has happened is instead of typing in my search phrase, um, will say I'm looking for, for puppies. I will type in the word puppies for sale. I'll type that and Google understands. But now I'm going to talk to my phone and I'm going to say, where can I buy a puppy? Not puppies for sale. And in order for Google to handle that, it has gone to its own social platform, Google Plus, and will process questions, phrases, through Google Plus. So, by getting onto Google Plus, you can bypass your competitors on SEO. And it's ridiculous how well it works. <laughs> so yes, everybody loves to hate Google Plus. Yes, it's another social media platform. Yes, it's another learning curve. The number one complaint is um, navigation. It's a pain in the butt to find everything. However, once you learn where they've tucked everything, because it's completely backwards from Facebook, posting's the same. Don't tell Google Plus that, they hate hearing it. Posting's the same, sharing's the same, liking, or plus wanting, is the same, tagging is the same, everything's the same. Once you can find it, the difference is search engines crawl Google Plus, search engines do not crawl Facebook in the same way at all. Every post I make, I can make a post and say, let's say I sell puppies. Um, so my question was, where can I buy a puppy? Um, and probably it's going to be someplace local, or Siri's going to pull that I'm in San Luis Obispo. So I would do a post. Have you been asking yourself lately, where can I find a puppy? Where can I buy a puppy in San Luis Obispo? Guess what? I just had a litter of puppies at my house. I have written your question in my post and it will be crawled by Google. Mm -hmm. And when somebody picks up their phone and asks Siri, where can I buy a puppy in San Luis Obispo, it's not gonna find it on a website because we don't write that way on our websites. It's gonna find it in a post. And it's gonna put my post at the top of the search results. It's gonna either be up on the right-hand side or it's gonna be right underneath the ads before the very first results. I've cut the line and it's amazing. So, yes, everybody hates it. Yes, it's in the butt. Yes, it works really, really well if what you need is search engine optimization. Yes. So your, your posts you're talking about are on Facebook? Google no. Plus. Mm -mm. On Google Plus. Mm -hmm. So... Google doesn't like Facebook, so Google won't crawl Facebook. Google uh, owns Google Plus. So you got to have a separate... Like, uh, this is Google a whole other platform. Facebook, if you will. It is. It is a Google Facebook. And Google hates being called that, and that's exactly what it is. It's a Google Facebook. And Google just doesn't like it because initially it's difficult to navigate in the beginning. But once this is set up, it's, it's super easy. easy. It's the same thing. Yeah. So it's kind of awesome. And yeah. how long has this been around? Uh, Not to sound completely naive, but I mean, I just haven't. No, it's two years. Two years. It, what happens is they'll roll it out, but they won't actually make it public. Mm -hmm. I have a, a cute little card somebody got for me, and it's a little dog and a scarf and glasses. Yeah. I was on Google Plus before it was open to everyone. 
<laughs> uh, because that's what I do. When there's a new platform, I go, what is this? Click. Um, but they're making drastic changes right now. They've hit kind of their growing pain. Um, and so right now, everybody's still kind of screaming because of the changes. For example, if you have a Google local business page, which most people do um, when they have an established like brick and mortar location, it's how you get found on the map. Um, they're rolling them into Google Plus. And everyone's going, wait, but but I, I, I made a Google Plus page, so I have a local local page and I have a Google Plus page. And I have two. Oh, I'm not that up. Oh, and if you have YouTube, they'll make you one too. So now you have that. And if you have Gmail, they'll make you one, is that three, four, four? Okay. I spend hours and hours on cleanup projects. My biggest one took me 13 hours of work to clean up the mess. They had three YouTubes, four Google Plus, now you have profiles, and you have business pages. So they had four profiles, three YouTubes, two brand pages, four local listings, and then something else. I think they had like another email account. I mean, it was just pull your hair out, it's a mess. <laughs> because you have to put them into one happy, cohesive little thing with one login. And one login will get you up to one login will get you to your profile. One login will get you to your page. That same login will get you to YouTube. And it needs to be all happy cohesive. Okay, the other thing Google Plus offers, and I don't talk about this a lot here because at some point your eyes will start to glaze over, but um, <laughs> authorship. When you do a Google search, have you ever noticed the little picture that shows up next to somebody's results? The circle little picture makes them look like they know what they're doing, right? It's a piece of code, I swear to you, it's this long, little bitty bitty one line thing, that you connect to your Google Plus page that says, I wrote that, and when that result pulls into Google, it pulls that picture. And if you start paying attention to those search results that have a picture, it will even say how many followers they have on Google Plus. Because that's what it's pulling. My website does it. I have like three blogs on my website. I, I, my website is my, I call it my sandbox. I use it to experiment on all the time. But if you pull up the right information on me, I'll look like I'm all kinds of professional with my blog result because my picture shows up next to it. And I may be the fifth one down, but who are you going to click? Oh, the picture. Everybody clicks the one with the picture. We like pictures. We've been bred and, and we have it ingrained in our mind to like pictures. So that is also Google Plus. And if you are a blogger, you need to have the authorship. You have to have it because even if you are fifth down, sixth down, eighth down, you have that little circle picture, their eye goes past everything else and clicks the one with the picture. And all it is is having Google Plus, you don't even have to post. You have Google Plus, you take a little tiny piece of code that goes into your website and it just says, I'm the author of this page and that's me. And Google pulls the picture. Done. And it's amazing. Yeah. Now, Google, if I put a link in Google Plus, will Google then crawl the link or is it only what's on the post? No, it will crawl the link. It will do link building. Great. Yeah. And your posts here, let me get into the circle for it. Your posts here are over 200 characters. Posts can be 10,000 characters long. I don't feel like reading anything that long. Please don't post anything that long. But this is all about search engine optimization. So your post with your link must have your keywords in order for it to give you any value. So you write a post and you talk about puppies for sale in San Luis Obispo. I don't know why I'm apparently I want a puppy <laughs> today. Um, <laughs> I don't have a dog, but um, you talk about puppies for sale in San Luis Obispo and you share a link to your website where you've got your breeder information about buying a puppy. And Google crawls it and it sees the word puppies for sale, it sees your link, and it connects the dots. Cannot do that on Facebook. Won't do that on Facebook. Doesn't, uh, doesn't want to do that on Facebook because Google doesn't own Facebook. Google and Facebook got in a fight and Google went, screw you, I'll make my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, sharing posts. I wrote here three times a week. You'll see later I put down probably five to six times a week. It is increasing. 